All right. Um, my presentation will probably run a bit early as well. Um, and this is something that I've kind of given a couple of times now at several different venues. So um, apologies if you've seen this before, but I just wanted to talk today about some work we've been doing at Princeton um, uh, to analyze the costs of DNS dot and Doe for the modern web. But what we mean by that is uh, we're really trying to understand how these different protocols affect the end user experience. Um, so not just measuring uh, things like query response times, um, but also page load times and then emulating different cellular conditions as well and seeing how um, they perform. So, um, you know, DNS privacy has become a significant concern recently, especially within the IETF. Um, we know that on path network observers can observe traditional DNS traffic in the clear. So, this is what I'm going to refer to the rest of the talk as DOE 53. Um, and so there have been two protocols that have been proposed to encrypt this traffic. There's DNS over TLS or DOT, um, and then DNS over HTTPS, which I'll be referring to as DOE. And so what we wanted to do, as I mentioned, is do an extensive performance study of these different protocols. So again, not only measuring query response times, but also page load times and um, measuring how the protocols perform on emulated network conditions. And we performed these measurements from five different global vantage points, um, but for the sake of brevity, I'm just going to be focusing on one in this talk. But we have some ongoing work um, in which you'll be able to see the full results. So the kind of key takeaway that I want um, for you to take away from this talk is that despite higher response times um, for Doe, we're actually observing that the page load times can be faster um, than with DOE 53. This is actually with DOT and DOE, I should say, um, which we didn't um, expect at all going into this work, um, and we'll give a couple of reasons of why we think that might be the case. So just starting off, this is some DNS response signs we observed from Cloudflare at Ohio. So uh, the way we configured this is we used Cloudflare's 1.1.1.1 uh, resolver. Um, just uh, measuring DNS response times to it. So whenever we use dot and do, we also uh, reuse the TLS connections. Um, and uh, as you can see here, we see that um, for about 20, uh, do app performs about 25% of dot queries. Um, as you can see on the bottom, this is just for the first about 250 milliseconds on the x-axis, but then you can see on the shorter plot um, that this is going up to 1,500 milliseconds. So um, although DOT is taking over in the beginning, DOE manages to outperform it. And then what we're seeing is that actually in this kind of tail of the initial response times that DOE is actually catching up to DOE 53. So it's not strictly the case that if you use an encrypted transport that you're going to get slower DNS response times. Um, and we see this with DOT as well, that it's also catching up. Um, and I want to note that this is not only um, the case where we're catching up to a local resolver, which when I say default DOE 53, I'm referring to the local just DNS resolver getting us to us over DHCP. Um, but this is also uh, outperforming even Cloudflare's own um, DNS resolver for DOE 53, um, which uh, we'll also go into that a bit more of why we think that might be the case. Um, this is with Google as well. So same idea, we have a vantage point um, on Amazon EC2 in Ohio. Um, we're comparing um, all the different protocols with Google's resolver and then also comparing the performance to the local resolver given by Amazon. Um, and we're seeing similar behavior um, that kind of in this tail response times that Doe is catching up to the different protocols. So again, it's not strictly the case that um, you're getting slower response times, but rather um, there's this kind of interesting trend where, you know, very quickly actually within 250 milliseconds of response times that the protocols are all catching up to each other. Um, and then lastly, this is from Quad9. Um, so interestingly, we found that Doe is actually outperforming DOT for almost all the queries. Um, there seems to be this uh, behavior we observed where it appears as if the uh, DNS responses aren't being cached from uh, Quad9's DOT resolver. Um, we reached out to them and tried to understand the performance that we got, showed them our source code, and we had some initial conversation but couldn't come to a conclusion. Um, 
But then we're also observing, once again, as with Google and Cloudflare, that um, Doe is catching up to traditional DNS or Doe 53 in the Taylor response times. So the kind of key takeaway here is just in terms of query response times that Doe can actually catch up to and even outperform, we noticed in some cases, um, Doe 53. This is within, um, you know, within Cloudflare, within Quad9, and within Google. And so to kind of dig into what I mean by that a little more is we found that in terms of response times, Doe actually has a higher mean overall, but a lower variance than unencrypted DNS, um, a much lower variance. Um, and this is a result that we observed across different vantage points as well. Um, but again, for this talk, I'm only going to be going to the results we observed from Ohio in EC2. And there's a couple of explanations we um, thought about. One is just wire format caching, where it might be the case that the entire wire format of, um, is getting cached and, uh, for HTTP, and that might enable faster response times. Not exactly clear how much they might improve response times. Um, but we also thought that maybe in the case of a CDN like Cloudflare, um, they might be doing HTTP caching at the edge, very close to the user, um, which might also be improving uh, response times for Doe in comparison to traditional DNS. Um, so we also want, as I mentioned earlier, wanted to emulate different cellular conditions. So um, the reason why we did this is that you know, we're starting to see that Doe and Dot are being offered on phones, whether it's Cloudflare's 1.1.1.1 uh, app. Um, we're also seeing that Android 9 supports DOT. Um, and so we thought it would be important to measure how these different protocols perform on phones, um, given that there's becoming more adoption for encrypted DNS protocols. Um, and we figured the performance might also be significantly different. Um, but unfortunately, we weren't able to um, set up a, our measurements on a, mo a real mobile network. So um, we settled for emulating the cellular conditions. So we did 4G, kind of a lossy 4G, where it's the same 4G conditions, but with 1% uh, more packet loss and 3G. Um, these were conditions that uh, we were able to emulate based on um, numbers that we got from an open signal report. So this is comparing um, all the different protocols for Cloudflare to Ohio in terms of page load times. And the way you can read this is that this is taking the uh, difference in page load times for um, you know, given two protocols, for example, on the left, you have Cloudflare Dot and Cloudflare Doe 53. You're taking the page load times, comparing them to each other, and subtracting the difference. And the kind of vertical line you see in the middle is the median. Um, so basically, the way you can read this is that um, if you're looking at Dot, Doe, and Doe 53 in terms of page load times, um, in the median case, they're all performing very similarly, right? There doesn't seem to be this observable difference um, between the protocols and page load times. And this is on in, um, just the default network conditions without any kind of emulation or traffic shaping at all. Um, so for example, we see that DOT was actually only one millisecond slower in the median page load time than DOE 53. Um, so really no observable difference there. Um, and in the case of DOE, it was 19 milliseconds slower than DOE 53. Um, so we're kind of seeing this ordering of where, you know, DOT is performing slightly slower than DOE 53, and then DOE is performing slightly slower than DOT. So now we go on to the emulated 4G network conditions. Um, what we're seeing is that the performance is changing a little bit. So uh, we still see the same performance with DOT, where when on these emulated 4G network conditions that DOT is performing um, just slightly slower than DOE 53 in the kind of median page load time. But when you look at DOE, it's gotten significantly slower, where DOE is 70 milliseconds slower in the median page load time than DOE 53. Um, and now if you go into the lossy 4G where we took the same 4G settings and add an additional 1% packet loss, um, we're seeing even more interesting behavior, right? Where now DOT has gotten 62 milliseconds faster um, than traditional DNS in page load times, which we, we didn't expect to see at all. Um, and with DOE, now DOE has actually also gotten faster than DOE 53 in terms of page load times, now 20 milliseconds. Um, so 
there's this kind of interesting behavior where as you've gotten to um, worse than any network conditions that um, DOT and DOE are able to actually outperform traditional DNS. But everything kind of collapses when you go to 3G network conditions. Um, so you're seeing here that um, DOT and DOE are performing much slower than unencrypted uh, traditional DNS. So in this case, DOT is 197 milliseconds slower than DOE 53. Um, and similarly, you're saying with DOE that it's 260 milliseconds slower. Um, so the kind of key takeaway here, uh, just to reiterate, is that we're seeing that uh, it's not necessarily the case that just because you're using DOT or DOE that you're going to get worsening performance, um, that actually under certain network conditions, you might observe the case where it's actually faster. Um, and this was a really unexpected finding. We weren't sure how to how we got to this, but the kind of most likely explanation we've got to is that it might be retransmission times with TCP compared to UDP. So um, the TCP packets could be retransmitted within two uh, round trip times, um, whereas uh, for DOE53, the timeout is set to five seconds by default um, in Linux with ResolveConf. Um, and so what we're thinking is that as you get into lossier network conditions, particularly as you observed going from 4G to lossy 4G, it might be the case that um, as packets are getting retransmitted that you could actually retransmit faster over TCP, um, which we think might help um, the performance of dot and doe in page load times, despite the fact that you might have higher DNS response times. So just to summarize, um, we did a performance study of doe 53 dot and doe where we're comparing query response times, page load times, and emulate network conditions. Um, in future work, we're wanting to do reforms analysis over a diverse set of networks where it might be residential ISPs across the United States rather than just um, Amazon EC2 instances. And we also want to do measurements in um, networks that are kind of further away from CDNs. Um, we're working with a university uh, in South Africa and some colleagues there to run some measurements across Africa and some uh, instances they have set up there. Um, so I know this was a short talk um, and last talk of the day, so I appreciate you taking the time to listen and I'll take any questions. Yeah, I'm Carl Auerbach and um, I was wondering if you'd observed any sort of um, issues with slow start and congestive back off on TC the underlying TCP. Uh, that's one of my questions. I'm just going to give you the whole list of them now you can address sure. it. Sure. The other one was, have you tried anything out with Quick to see if there's any other variations to using that as the underlying transport? And the third part has, have you dealt with it, this sort of thing over any buffer bloat situations? So to your second question about whether we've tried this with Quick, um, we haven't yet. This was just strictly over using, um, for example, for Doe, using just HTTP2, which we had configured just because that was the recommended setting um, in the RFC 8484. Um, as far as any issues with buffer bloat, that wasn't something that we had measured or observed, um, but that would be an interesting thing to look into. Um, yeah, I mean, that's just something that we, we didn't look into or measure. Andrew Dahl, 8 Continents. Are all your DNS over 53 queries UDP, or were there any TCP queries in there? They were just over UD, uh, UDP. For this study, um, but you know, again, as we had gotten comments on this presentation before about wanting to also measure over TCP because we just didn't expect at all to get this kind of a result. Um, so, in ongoing measurements that we're doing now, we're also going to be measuring over TCP to really tease out um, this performance. Okay, thanks. All right, thank you.